Good morning, students. I'm myself, Vijay Shankar from BC Department, Chevron Engineering College. Today, we are going to discuss about the distortionless transmission through the system. In previous class, uh, we've seen the, some examples of a stable, unstable system, causal and non causal system. And before that, previous class, uh, we've seen, we discussed about the examples in the linear time invariant system linear system, non-linear, and time invariant and time invariant system. Now we go for the another topic that is a distortionless transmission through system. See this distortionless transmission through the system, it means uh, the output signal is an exactly replica of the input signal. Without any distortion, whatever the signal we transmitted from the transmitter side, and receiver at the receiver side without having any noise or the distortion occurs. Means exactly the replica. Whatever we send from the transmitter, that is the input signal, exactly replica of the input signal. Input, uh, it passes through the system, it gets the output. The difference between the input and output of such system is that first two points we have, amplitude of the output signal may increase or decrease uh, by some factor of uh, with respect to the input. Amplitude of the output signal may increase or decrease by some factor of with respect to the input. Let us consider here the K is an amplitude. So the output Y of T is equal to that signal can either increase or decrease the amplitude. K is equal to and the output signal may be delayed in the time with respect to the input signal because of system delay. Due to the system delay, the output is also delayed here, not for the delay of the input signal here. So the input, uh, the delay, that, let us take here the x of t minus t naught, because the output will get the delay due to the system delay. The y of t is equal to y of t is equal to k into x of t minus t naught. The constant represents the change in the amplitude and the t naught is a time delay in transmission of the signal through the system. But my students. Now we can apply the Fourier y of f is equal to the Fourier transformation of the Time delay function e power minus uh, j 2 pi f uh, into t naught into x of f. Okay, my dear friend, this is a y of f is equal to k into x of f e power minus j 2 pi f into t naught. The only the difference uh, between the input and output of such systems is. Its amplitude either is increasing or decreasing with a factor of the k here, and the output may be delayed in the time with respect to the input signal because of the system delay, the x of t minus uh, t naught. After applying the Fourier transformation on both sides, uh, y of f is equal to sub k into the x of f e power minus j 2 pi f into t naught. Okay. Then we got the y of f is equal to x of f, x of f into k, the exponential factor e power minus j 2 pi f into t naught. Now the system function, the h of f is equal to h of f is equal to the transfer function output by the input. Uh, in the frequency, the y of f by the x of f is equal to k into e power minus j 2 pi f into t naught. Okay. The phase shift here, the phase shift, uh, let us assume that is a theta of f is equal to e power minus z theta. Let us take this a theta value. The theta of f is a 2 pi f minus is also that 2 pi f. 2 pi f into the t naught. Okay. And the magnitude, magnitude is a k1. The h of f, the phase shift is a linearly proportional to the frequency and its amplitude spectrum is a k is a constant. 
and here it is a passes to the origin when f is equal to 0 the value is a zero when the f value is uh, the negative values uh, we get the positive here and goes to the negative is the time to minus signal x of t is equal to cos 2 pi f into t delayed when it passes to the theta of f the t Two pi f into t naught, which is proportional to the frequency f, which is proportional to the frequency f. Distortion, sir. One is amplitude distortion and the phase distortion. Gain and that phase distortion. The distortion occurs uh, when the phase of h of omega is not linearly changing uh, with the time. The previously we got the expression is a linearly changing function, which is not and the different frequencies are selected to. And e power minus j 2 pi f uh, into t naught, uh, which is distortion for that one. If it is not the linear, then we will get the phase distortion. If the amplitude is not the amplitude distortion, we think that constant, uh, if it is a variable, you get the distortion occurs in the amplitude. This distortion occurs when the magnitude is band of uh, interest and the frequency components present in the input signal are transmitted with a different gain and attenuation. Okay. Now go for the signal the lower cutoff frequency at 3 dB frequency. It is a high frequency, it is a 1, and at the 3 dB frequency, you will take the point not 1. Omega 2 is a high frequency, and omega 1 is a low frequency. Omega 2 minus omega 1 is a the band of frequency that contains most of the signal energy is called a band of signal denoted by the FM. It is a range of significant signal frequency. Observing the waveform X of T has a significant frequencies from omega 2 to the omega 1 or omega 1 to the omega. The bandwidth of this unit signal is omega 2 minus omega 1. Lower cutoff frequency. All the physically obtained signal have limited bandwidth. Okay, we know.
one by under root of two is nothing but point seven not seven minus point seven not seven. This is exactly the three D fifty base. The bandwidth of the system is defined as the range of frequencies for which the magnitude remains within the one by root two times of the mid band value. Actually, for the low frequency, slowly it is increases, and the mid frequency it is falls. Jump by root two. Or point seven not seven. That with the omega one and the omega two here, the band of frequency within the one by root two times of the mid band value for distortionless transmission. The system must have the infinite bandwidth, but physical system are limited to the finite bandwidth. The finite bandwidth is omega two minus omega one only. And so a system with finite bandwidth can provide the distortionless transmission for a bandwidth signal if magnitude of h of omega remains constant for a bandwidth of the signal and the range of frequencies for which the magnitude of h of g omega of the system remains within the 1 by 2 of its maximum value what it matters These are the definitions of the amplitude distortion, phase distortion, signal bandwidth, and the system bandwidth. Understood? You take the range of the the system bandwidth for the and. Next, we know the causal signal. Causal signal means uh, having only the positive relaxes, the negative relaxes is totally the zero. The system is said to be causal if h of t is equal to zero, if t is less than the zero. There is no any term in the negative relaxes. Okay, total the value is zero, then we can say that is a causal system. If the input is a zero for t less than the t naught, then the output is also zero for t less than the t naught. Any system which does not obey the above rule is non-causal system. It does not obey the above rule means non-causal system. Which obeys the rule means causal system. Means uh, let us take here the unit step function is a causal, and if it is a shifted towards the left side, it is not a non-causal system. Because it depends upon the feature also, feature input sir. Got it. Causal system means it depends upon the present and the past inputs only. It is not depends upon the feature inputs. So the input is not the value. We can take the get to bring that it is the input input uh, uh, feature inputs are the zero. We can take the h of t value is a zero. If the two Inputs of uh, the two input to a causal system are equal up to the some time t naught. Then the corresponding output must be equal to up to the time instant. Okay, so I am saying here the x of uh, n or the x of t. Let us take this x of t in the convolution function when you can expand the n is equal to minus infinite to infinite. Uh, X of uh, let us take it is a k value. X of n minus k into h of k. Expand this value from so on. X of uh, n minus of minus one. Let me put the plus h of minus one plus x of n h of zero. K is equal to I am substituting the minus one here. And the next is a zero, and the plus one x of n minus one and h of one. See the combination of the input signal. There is a impulse response also. When we can say it is a causal system, means it depends upon the present and the past inputs. It does not depends upon the future inputs. To bring these values a zero, how to 
take the equation h of n is equal to 0 for n less than the 0. h of n is equal to 0 for n less than the 0 in the discrete function or the h of t is equal to 0 for n less than, not the n, sorry, t less than the 0. Okay. Next is the polyvinar criterion. What is the polyvinar criterion? And what is the relation between the rise time and the bandwidth? This gives the condition of causality in frequency domain. Condition of causality in frequency domain, or in other words, the frequency domain equivalent of causal system H of omega. Previously, we take here the H of T, the causal system. Polyvinar criteria means uh, it gives the condition for the causality in frequency domain that is H of omega. H of T, we know the H of T is uh, less than is equal to zero for T less than zero. In the polyvinar criteria and the causality taking the frequency domain for the H of omega, what is that condition here? Consider the system with the transfer function H of omega. The necessary and sufficient condition for H of omega to the transfer function of causal is integral minus infinite to infinite ln of H of omega, magnitude of H of omega pi, 1 plus omega square into d omega is less than the infinite. Nothing but this total integral value you have to get as a finite value only. Or otherwise, provide that this is h of omega is a squared, squared integral, integral minus infinite to infinite squared magnitude of h of j omega d omega is less than the infinite. This is a polyvinar criterion of the condition two is not satisfied, then the condition is one is neither necessary nor sufficient. If this is not satisfied, but it is necessary, but it's not the sufficient condition. Okay. This is a causality in frequency domain. We can call it as a polyvinar criterion. And causality we already know in the time domain h of t is equal to 0 for t is less than the 0. What is my difference? And we can derive the physically realizable t for this. Uh, a system is said to be physically realizable if it obeys the causal condition h of t is equal to 0 for t is less than 0. Let us take the example h of omega is equal to 1 plus j omega. h of t is e power minus t mu of h of t is equal to e power minus t mu of t. See the mu of t is multiplied means only it is from 0 to infinite. The less than the t, the varies of variable is a t. But less than the, the t is less than the 0, the value becomes a 0. So h of t is equal to 0, but t is less than the 0. But the function h of omega is equal to 1 plus j omega. So the above equation less than the infinite. Okay. For otherwise, you can take the squared magnitude of h of omega d omega is less than the infinite. You can prove that value is a finite value. That it satisfies the condition, polyvinar criteria. Okay. <clears throat> the frequency domain statement can be interpreted as H of omega, a physically realizable system, maybe zero for some discrete frequency, but it can never be the zero for the finite band of frequency. H of omega for a realizable system cannot uh, decay faster than the function at the exponential order. The system with transfer function e power minus omega is realizable, whereas the e power minus omega square is not as it is a uh, decay faster. Understood? Then you can see the relation between the rise time and the bandwidth. Relation between the rise time and the bandwidth. The TR is equal to rise time means uh, time taken to reach 100%. Delay time means 
time taken to reach the 50 percent peak time means the time taken to reach the peak value understood my dear friends is the rise time and the relation between of the rise time and the bandwidth you know the bandwidth is a upper cut off frequency minus a lower cut off frequencies let us take here to derive this expression it is a very important my dear friends listen carefully the previously all it is a definitions only polyvinyl criterion and the uh, system bandwidth uh, signal bandwidth and phase distortion and amplitude distortion the relation between of the rise term and the bandwidth is a derivation part uh, and it is a very important in the examination point of view also if a unit step function v of t is applied to the ideal low pass filter the step function is applied to the ideal low pass filter the output with uh, will show a gradual rise instead of a sharp rise of the input function giving that the input uh, it passes to the low pass filter and will give the response is uh, a linear response uh, r of t as r of t is equal to t for the t is greater than or equal to 0 so the transfer function of the ideal low pass filter is uh, h of omega is equal to magnitude of h of omega into e power j theta of omega where h of omega is a rectangular pulse uh, with a magnitude of k in take a uh, minus b less than or equal to f less than or equal to b as uh, we already know the rectangular function in between of uh, minus b heads to the b heads or in terms of the omega omega n to the omega band limited to the function where omega m is equal to 2 pi into f what is the f here the beta is there. omega m is equal to you know the 2 pi f. what is the f here is nothing but the frequency in hertz the 2 pi sorry b got it my students and theta of omega is equal to minus 2 pi f in t naught we already know the function in there that is the omega into t naught the cos uh, 2 pi f into t and it is a delayed version the 2 pi f uh, into t naught uh, this total cos function having the theta of f or the pi of f is a minus 2 pi f into t naught that's 2 pi f is a omega minus omega naught omega into t naught okay the fourier transformation of the unit step function the mu of t is the fourier transformation of the step function the mu of omega is equal to because we are applying the step function here to the low pass filter passing to the low pass filter fourier transformation of mu of t is a pi into delta of omega plus 1 by z pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega. The Fourier transformation of the response. Uh, so what is the Fourier transformation of the output function r of omega? And the input is a step function. And here the system is h of t. Let us take uh, a system. and the system r of t is equal to v of t with the convolution of uh, h of t and apply the Fourier transformation on both sides it becomes of r of omega is equal to v of t nothing but v of omega into the convolution becomes a uh, product in the frequency h of omega so what is a v of omega pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega into the whole multiplied with the h of omega. What it matters for that we can note here r of omega is equal to pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega into h of omega. Multiply this h of omega for the two terms 
pi into delta of omega into h of omega 1 by 0 omega into h of omega. Okay. When you can take the step function as an input signal, input function, a system is a low pass filter. Inside that is a h of t, the impulse response. To get the response is a ramp function r of t. The frequency response of the free is r of omega is equal to pi into delta of omega h of omega plus 1 by 0 omega into h of omega. Next, the delta of omega. So here in this function, the delta of omega exists only for omega is equal to 0 because uh, the impulse function get only at, at one value only at omega is equal to 0. Got it, my students. So at omega is equal to 0, the exist only at the for omega is equal to 0 and h of omega at omega is equal to 0, the value is a 1. Okay. Then it becomes of uh, r of omega is equal to pi into delta of omega plus h of 1 by j omega into x, h of omega. So I take here the delta of omega, the value is of 1 at omega is equal to 0. The h of omega, the value is also 0. So combination of delta of omega and h of omega. But taking the inverse Fourier transformation of the above function, r of omega is r of t. An inverse Fourier transformation of r of omega is pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega into h of omega. I substitute here the h of omega is equal to 0. At omega is equal to zero. Got it, my dear friends. In the first equation, first term. So inverse Fourier transformation: pi into delta of omega plus one by z omega into h of omega. If I written as h of omega is equal to when it having the magnitude and the phase, let that magnitude is considered as a z omega and e power minus omega into t naught as a phase value. Substitute that h of omega as z omega into e power minus j omega into t naught. So the inverse Fourier transformation pi into delta of omega is a one pi. How we got this? Uh, the Fourier transformation of one. Fourier transformation of one is two pi into delta of omega. You know, in the Fourier transformation we discussed this one. And the Fourier transformation of uh, 1 by 2, the constant, uh, the 2 will get, then becomes of pi into delta of omega. So it is a, in the frequency for inverse Fourier transformation is 1 by 2. So the pi of delta of omega, the inverse Fourier transformation we are applying here. So first term is becomes of 1 by 2. And the second term, what we have here, the inverse Fourier transformation of uh, 1 by z omega into z omega e power minus j omega into t naught. Okay. Let us directly apply the inverse Fourier transformation using the formula 1 by 2 pi into to get it is a g of omega is a nothing but is h of omega the 1 by 2 pi into minus infinite to infinite 1 by j omega g of omega, the total function is minus e power minus j omega t naught all multiplied with the, the positive exponential j omega t into d omega. Okay. And this j omega is varies from here minus omega to the omega. We already told that a rectangle function in between of minus b to the b or it is a minus omega m to the omega value is a 1. So that g of omega, you can write it as a 1, 1 by 2 pi in the range of minus omega m to the omega m, 1 by j omega into, let it representing the g of omega is equal to 1. And here the exponentials, uh, both the exponential base is the same. Let us take the j as a common minus j, not the minus j, it is a plus j you can take as a common. Omega is also the common term, j omega into 
T minus T naught into D omega. What is my difference? So 1 by 2, 1 by 2, and now the integral is minus omega m to the omega m e power j omega into t minus t naught whole divided by j omega into d omega. But it matters. We know the e power plus j omega, you can write it as a pass and in terms of the sign. The e power jx is equal to cos x plus j sin x or e power minus jx is equal to cos x minus j sin x. You know this is a function equation in the trigonometric equations. You can add these two functions uh, cos x is e power plus jx minus not the minus plus e power minus jx by the 2, the Euler's rule. You can add these two functions, you will get a 2 cos x is equal to, so cos x is equal to this function. So, the e power jx, you can write in terms of the cos at the sign, 1 by 2 into the integral minus omega m to the omega m. Write the enumerator function as a cos omega x term is omega into t minus t naught plus j into sine omega t minus t naught whole divided by j omega into d omega. So, this is an integral with respect to the omega. The two integrals we get. We know in the full cycle, in the full cycle, the cos function is always cos function is always the zero. So, zero for its odd term. Okay, my dear the cos function is always a, a zero only. Or it's a zero for its uh, odd function. Understood? Then the second term, what we have here, the one by the omega. is an even function. Okay. Now, the R of t is equal to 1 by 2, the plus uh, 1 by 2 pi into, when it is an integral, it is an even function, means you can multiply the 2 and change the limitations as minus omega m to the omega m as 0 to omega m. What is going to be sir? If it is an even function and the odd function, if odd function means a 0 in the full cycle, and here the even function means uh, multiplying with the 2 and changes the limitations as a 0 to in omega m. 2 into so sine omega t minus t naught by omega into d omega and 2 to get cancelled here. 1 by 2 is for the inverse Fourier transformation of pi delta of omega plus 1 by pi after uh, cancelling the 2 integral 0 to omega m sine omega pi omega into t minus t naught by omega into d omega. Sine by function, the integral is a sink function. Sink of omega by the t minus t naught the omega m to the zero. Okay, the sine integral becomes omega m to the zero. The upper limit is of omega m and the lower limit is a zero. So, the rise term is given as uh, tr is equal to 2 pi by the omega m, that is 1 by z b. The omega m is nothing but uh, the range is from the minus b to the b. So, that is a minus omega m to the omega m. Okay. So, the rise term is given the tr is equal to, the tr is equal to 2 pi by the omega m. And that omega m, you can written as uh, a b, 2 pi by the b, the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. The tr is equal to 1 by tr is equal to omega m by the pi by the pi. The 
uh, frequency of the low pass filter. The TR is equal to the relation between of the rise time and the bandwidth. Now it is uh, omega m. Actually, you can write it as a 2 pi. Why it is a 2? Omega m is equal to third confusion 2 pi by p. They get cancelled. The TR is equal to 1 by p. The TR is equal to 1 by 2 pi into b. It get cancelled. The rise time is equal to 1 pi. What it matters? Inversely proportional to the bandwidth and to the rise time. Rise time is inversely between the inversely proportional to the bandwidth. Our bandwidth is inversely proportional to the touch. TR is equal. It's so nothing but the frequency one. The omega m is a frequency. The time is always inversely proportional to the frequency matters. Our frequency is inversely proportional to the time one. Got it? So the diagram here, why I am writing that, it is 50% uh, reaches the uh, delay time, 100% it reaches the uh, rise time. So in this diagram, the 50% is delay is uh, nothing but the TD. TD is a delay time and 100% nothing but the 1 is a rise time. At this stage, uh, you get the omega m by pi, the waveform. Omega m pi, that is a TR is equal to, we got a, uh, Omega m by the pi. Okay. Thing omega is Y of P is equal to X1 and X2. Edit. 